Okay, so in this lesson, what we're going to talk about today is the integration between Maxon's Cinema 4D and Adobe After Effects. We've done a few lessons, a few tutorials in Cinema 4D, and we've done several lessons in Adobe After Effects. But now we want to talk about how Cinema 4D works with After Effects. And as you know, After Effects is a 2D program. It mainly deals with 2D images and 2D videos, and it can move in 3D space. And sometimes it's referred to as a 2.5D or a 2.5D program because it can use stuff in 2D space and use stuff in 3D space back and forth, but it doesn't do real actual 3D modeling. In the future, maybe Adobe After Effects will start to get into more 3D aspects of stuff and do some more 3D modeling kind of things. It's starting to broach into that category as well with some things you can do with text and some things you can do with shape layers. But for now, it's mostly, mostly a 2D program where it's starting to tiptoe a little bit into 3D. Well, they have a great relationship with Cinema 4D. And as I've mentioned before in previous tutorials, I was afraid of getting involved in 3D modeling, actually creating 3D geometry and doing all that artistry. And it was Cinema 4D that really kind of excited me about getting involved in 3D because it works so well with After Effects. And since I fell in love with After Effects, I sort of fell in love with Cinema 4D as a next stage of my development as a student, basically. So I want to talk about how After Effects and Cinema 4D work together really, really well because they actually do work together really, really well. So we're going to start with making a new composition here. I'm just going to make a new composition. We'll make this 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames a second. Uh, 10 seconds will be fine for us. And we're just going to do a demo here of this. So we're going to create a black screen, simple black screen, nothing special about this here. And we can work inside of After Effects. And we can make something as simple as uh, a solid in After Effects, Command Y, make something and make a solid. We'll make a comp size, I don't know, green solid or something. And we can make stuff in Cinema 4D, or sorry, make stuff in After Effects and just have that. Yeah, cool. We've made something in After Effects. Well, no big deal. And again, we can take this thing and we can move it into 3D space. We can take it and rotate it in different 3D dimensions and have it there and do stuff in 3D space and move on the Z axis back forward and move there. And that's sort of moving in 3D, but it's not actually doing 3D per se. So we want to actually make something that moves in 3D space or actually has 3D geometry. So if you ever noticed here in the layer menu, in the layer, there's new layer max on Cinema 4D file. Now this will do a couple things. The first thing we'll do is we'll open up a program called Cinema 4D Lite. Now, what is Cinema 4D Lite? Well, it's kind of a stripped down version of Cinema 4D. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It doesn't have all the features and functions. It's not a fully robust Max on Cinema 4D project that you're going to make, you have some basic tools to make some basic 3D stuff. This comes automatically with After Effects. So you don't even have to download this. You don't have to get this. You actually own this. If you own After Effects, it's buried inside of there. It's secretly hidden inside of there that you have a copy of this light version of Cinema 4D. It's already there for you. Nothing to install. It just works. And so it's right inside of there. So when we open this up, it's going to open up Cinema 4D light. However, I own a full version of Max and Cinema 4D. So I have mine navigated to open up a full version of Cinema 4D instead of going to Cinema 4D Lite, which I don't really need because I have the full version. So when you see this, it's going to click, it's going to create a file here. It'll create a file here. It'll ask me to name the file. I'm just going to put this on the desktop here. And I'm just going to call this uh, something like 3D text because I want to make 3D text and I want to make it cool. Can I make some 3D text inside of After Effects? Yeah, we can talk about that later. But for now, I actually want to make 3D text in a 3D modeling program like Cinema 4D. So I'm going to go in here and say 3D text. I'm going to put this in the desktop. It's going to create a C4D file and I'll create this. And then it will open up Cinema 4D. And in the corner, you'll see that it'll start to open up Cinema 4D. I'm on version 2023.2.2 of Cinema 4D. I think that's the most recent version as of the current date. Um, and now it's going to open up Cinema 4D. It's going to do two other things here. We're going to go back to here and see that it created a layer. So it created a layer here, a three-second layer called 3D Text C4D. And there's actually a 3D Text C4D in my project window. Now, this layer actually comes automatically connected with an effect. And that effect is called Cineware. You might have seen this effect before if you ever went to the effects and saw inside Cinema 4D Cineware. This effect exists. And this effect is here. It's called Cineware. It's a thing. It's, a, it's an effect that exists. And you're like, what is this effect do? Well, the only reason this effect exists is so it, it, effect, it exists to work with Cinema 4D. And what this basically is, is a phone call between Cinema 4D and After Effects. Cinema 4D is finally opening up here. Quick start dialog. I'm going to close that for a second and go back to Cinema 4D. And now I'm in Cinema 4D and I'm in Cinema 4D in the 3D text 
you know, C4D project here. And so I'm in the C4D window here and I'm saying, let's just, let's just, for example, let's just make a cube. I'm just going to go here and make a cube. This is simple lesson. We're going to make a cube and I'm going to save this right now. There's an asterisk, which means it's not saved, but I'm going to hit command S and save this. It's going to sell me uh, that this project was originally created in version R25. We are in version 2023. They went previously from uh, numeric increases of numbers. So they went from 22 to 23 to 24 to 25, all the way back to 14, which was the first version that I was ever on. Um, and they've continued to go up and up in numbers. And they decided to go by year because it was just more made more sense to go by year. So I'm in the 2023 version, which is, I think, version 28 or something like that. Um, so uh, it was created in 2025 because... The version that's in After Effects is actually working with a 2025, or sorry, not 2025, a R25 version of Cinema 4D. But we're going to change that. We're going to say, yes, sure. Let's just upgrade to the newer version. And we're going to say, save, command S, save, and we save this. Now, when we hop back into After Effects, you're going to see an After Effects. Give it a second, and it will create a cube there. And the cube is there. It looks there like a cube. And we can go back into Cinema 4D just as an idea. And we can go in here into Cinema 4D, and we can say, let's change this cube. Let's make it smaller. Let's make it longer. Let's fill it the edges a little bit. We'll make some roundiness there. Again, it's not saved, so we're going to hit Command S and save this. And we're going to go back into After Effects, and then all of a sudden it updates. And there, it is updated. Now, the updated version right here is communicating here. So Cineware is this program that I often think of as making a phone call. It's talking between these two programs. So After Effects is calling the phone number here of Cinema 4D and saying, hey, what are you guys doing over there? What's Tell me what you're doing over there. So it's this live link. It's this live link that between there that if I make something and I put something here and create something awesome like this, I can say, hey, Great. I'm going to go in here and save this and then go back into here. And it says, hey, we've just updated the cube. I'm calling you to tell you we've updated the cube and it looks like this. So Cineware has some functions as well. You'll see a bunch of different functions and we can look through some of these right now. The most important function, I think, is the renderer. Right now, you're looking at a version called Viewport Draft. It says Renderer Viewport Draft. And that shows me what the viewport looks like. It looks like this. It looks like this with the ground plane, the grid down here. And it shows me this as an idea and shows me all the, all the functions there, et cetera. There's another mode in here that says render viewport, not draft, but viewport mode. And viewport mode shows a little bit better, shows a little bit of other circumstances, shows um, or shows this without the ground plane. It looks a little nicer. Um, it may look a little bit um, choppy or grainy on the edges there. You see that it looks, it's still kind of not perfect, not really great. It looks a little bit better, but it's not necessarily wonderful, but we can look at it there. You know that inside of Cinema 4D, if you hit this button or hit Command R on a Mac or Control R on a PC, you can render this. There's a temporary render to the viewport that looks like this. And that looks a lot sharper. It looks a lot nicer. It's a little, little bit prettier. Um, and we have that there. Well, that doesn't exist inside of After Effects. That Command R function brings up, I think, rulers in After Effects, which is not at all what we want. So let's go back in After Effects and let's see what we can do here. So here we have this viewport mode. We have viewport draft, which looks like this. We have viewport mode. And then we have something called current and current is high quality um, or at least sharper. And you can see here, it looks a little bit nicer on the edges here, a little bit smoother there. So you can see a little bit difference if you zoom in closely between viewport, which looks kind of choppy and then viewport current. And then it goes to current. This will take longer. So if you have materials, if you have lights, if you have some complex geometry, this will take longer to render, which sometimes is a, is a concern because you want to, you know, render as quick as possible. But if you have some complex stuff going on, you might go in here and say, yeah, let's go into the browser here and look at, say, materials or something and grab, say, a wood material. And you may say, oh, yeah, let's grab a wood material and say, cool, the wood material. Um, we'll grab something like a simple ash shader here of wood material. Well, this is going to download. And once it's downloaded, it's going to put this wood material on here. We'll close this out. We'll have this come on up. Wood material. It's building. It looks like a wood material. And so that's great. But notice how long this takes to run inside of here. Like this is taking some time to make this work inside of here. And so when we hit Command R, oh, there it is. When we hit Command R, yeah, it takes some time to actually work. Well, if we're in draft mode, I'll save this. If we're in draft mode inside of here, we go to viewport mode. Um, it takes, it, you know, it looks okay. Um, but Notice that it will take a, a second or two to render. If we go into current mode, it might take some time to render. 
I just went to a different frame to see if the green shows up. You might see a little blue bar in the bottom show up, and now it's rendered. It, you know, and as we get more complicated, it'll take more time to render inside of there. So that's the thing we can do. We can create different 3D objects inside of there, but we're going to get rid of this for a second. We're going to start something new here because I want to talk about some ideas of things you can do and how you can work between Cinema 4D and After Effects. This might be a little bit delayed, so we're going to get rid of this 3D text, even though this wasn't 3D text. We're going to make something else that's going to be 3D text. So we're going to go here and we're going to start over. I'm going to go in a blank screen and I'm going to remember this picture. I have this picture of this side table by the side of my bed here. This is a table by the side of my bed. It's a really big picture. So I'm going to move it down. I'm going to hit command option F to fit into frame. It's actually a di bit different size. So it's going to be a little bit, my bed is a little bit stretched out or the side table is a little bit stretched out, but I have the side table right here that looks like this. So I have this here and I have this as an idea. So I'm going to put something on top of this and we're going to go here and we're going to go layer new max on cinema 4d file and i'm gonna make a new cinema 4d file and that new max on cinema 4d file i'm actually gonna call this 3d text as well i'm gonna replace that picture of the cube the cube was really nothing special we're just gonna hit replace it's gonna say do you want to replace this yes of course i do i did it i made the decision to replace this and i'm gonna replace this with the new 3d text which is gonna actually open up the old 3d text which is fine and so now the 3d text is open it's open inside of here we're gonna delete this cube if we take this and save this this should boom put the cube into there Let's start over here. Let's actually make a new C4D file. Let's start Let's start fresh. Call it 3D text 2 or something there, just so we have something totally different. We're going to delete this 3D text because I have this little overlap and it's getting a little bit confused. Um, so we're going to start clean. And we're going to say here, we're going to make a new Max and Simple 4D file. And we're going to call this, um, click in the comp window, layer new Max and Simple 4D, Cinema 4D file. And we're going to call this 3D object in there. And if, if Cinema 4D is already open, it's just going to open. It's just going to open up a new thing into Cinema 4D. And we're going to go in here and make a new C4D object. And now we have a new window here. So we're going to get rid of this 3D text because there's kind of some redundancy here. And we're going to start with a new 3D object here. Cool. So we have this new 3D object. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to grab in something like a cone. We're just going to grab a cone and grab a cone in here. Um, maybe even a platonic. Maybe a platonic. We'll make a platonic. And we have this little picture of platonic here we're going to save this and it's going to put a platonic it's going to ask us if we want to update it yes the first time it's going to update and we're going to say in here so it's going to make a platonic now the trick being is if i want to put this platonic on top of this area here we're just going to go to viewport not draft but just go to viewport and if i want to put this on top of the table here it's going to be a little bit tricky so let's take a look if we go here and we can say okay let's use our controls our one two three and move this a little bit we'll move this back a little bit moves up kind of where I think, where I think the table is, kind of like there. Maybe I'll hit it, maybe I'll hit it perfectly. Let's see, save, hop back into After Effects. Let's see what it did. Nope, missed it. All right, go back into Sin 4D, and now I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna uh, zoom in a little bit, or maybe move in a little bit like there, and then move over, and then save, and see, see what I got. Maybe I hit it right. Now we're getting closer. Go back into Sin 4D, and then, I don't know, move over here. Rotate a little bit like this and have it there. And maybe that's better. Maybe that's better. Maybe over a little bit more. Save, tab, and then boom. Okay, so we're sort of on the table. But it ends up being tricky. It ends up being tricky to try to position something right where it's supposed to be inside the table. So we're going to do something different. We're going to go into a different kind of mentality or a different idea here. Again, I'm going to get rid of these C4D projects here. We're going to get rid of this 3D object and just start blank. Um, we're going to go back in After Effects and we're going to get rid of this 3D object here. The first thing I want to do in this case, and what I want to do as an idea is I want to make a solid. I'm going to go in here, Command Y, good old layer, new solid, and we'll make a solid. We'll make an orange solid here. Just a orangey solid. We'll make an orange solid. Cool. I'm going to make an orange solid. Okay. And I'm going to just make this say maybe 400 by 400, a regular orange solid. I'm going to take this solid. I'm going to make this solid 3D. So I'm going to hit the 3D switch and make this 3D. And I'm going to decide to move this. I'm going to move this a little bit this way. Maybe I'll maybe I'll put this back into space. I'll hit the Z axis and on the position and move back into space, switch back there. We'll go back maybe 1600 here and we'll rotate a little bit like this. And I'm going to put this so that I feel like it's ballpark on the table, you know, just in the right angle, the right perspective. I'm just going to eyeball this. It's not going to be perfect. I'm going to do my best to eyeball this and kind of hit this right here so that this is here. I'm going to zoom in so I can see a little bit better. It's a little bit crooked. We're going to rotate it this way. See how this looks if it's hitting this edge smoothly. It's not, so I'm going to tilt down a little bit. There, that feels better. We're going to push this down a little bit like this. So we're going to have this roughly where I think the table should be, like this. 
and the top of here is represented here by this solid. So this solid is representing where I think the top of the table is. We can move this over a little bit and cover the whole bit of table here. So we have a bit of a stretch there of table. And so we have this laid out across the table like so. It looks pretty good there. Fantastic. So it's right there on the table for better, for worse, what I think is the table there. I'll show you a trick I like to do sometimes just to see it. I like to use the grid effect. If you go to effect grid and generate grid, you can generate the grid. Oh yeah, that looks good. That's a nice way of using it. It doesn't work in Cinema 4D, but it's just a nice reference. You can turn it off when you don't need it, uh, but just a nice little reference. It feels very 3D, 3D geometry looking thing kind of thing. I just like it. It's fun. Uh, anyway, so we have this solid here. So I'm gonna take this solid here and then we're also going to make, we're going to take this solid, we're going to call this solid, we're going to name this top O table. So this is going to be the top of the table. I'm also going to make a camera. So layer new camera, that is command op option shift C, command alt shift C. Um, and we're going to say, just make a one node camera in this case, just a single one node camera. And we're going to say, okay, create a one node camera. And so now we create a camera, a 50 millimeter camera, a generic camera. And this camera is not looking at the 2D layer. It's just looking at the top of the table because it only works with 3D stuff. So cameras only reflect 3D things. And we can see this on the top of the table here. We're going to do this. Now, the other thing I'm going to do here is if you notice up top here, it'll say that my project has not been saved. So I do not have a saved project. It says untitled project here, unsaved. I'm going to save this. This is a detail. I had to figure this out. You have to do this. We're going to hit Command S. So we're going to hit Command S and we're going to save this project. I'm just going to call this um, desktop. We're going to call this um, side table project, side table 3D. And we're going to make a 3D project called side table 3D. Now I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to file. And under file, I'm going to go to file, export, Max on Cinema 4D exporter. And what that's going to do, it's going to export out the top of the table and the camera and send it potentially to Cinema 4D. This is not like the phone call. This is not like Cineware where it has an active communication between one program and the other. It's just a one-time communication back and forth. So this is saying, I'm going to send all this information and create a Cinema 4D file based on this information. And when you do this, it says, hey, Max on Cinema 4D exporter plugin, 2D layers found. These will not be exported. These will not be exported, which means the side table doesn't show up in, in the Cinema 4D. And that's fine. We don't need it to. It's not important. We've already made the top of the table. So that's going to send out into there. So we're going to say, okay, great. And we're going to call this um, reference from AE. And so this is going to be a reference from After Effects. Uh, I'm just going to name it that way. just helps me remember what I'm doing. And I have this in here. So we're going to go back into Cinema 4D. And we're going to say file, open, project. And now on the desktop, we're going to open up this reference from AE file. So we're going to do desktop and grab a reference from AE. And I want to show you what this looks like. We're going to open up reference from AE. And it has this side table there. My orange looks actually a little bit more red in this situation. And we have this. And so in here, we have inside here, it has this little kind of um, null folder kind of architecture here. And we have this top of table right here, which looks like this. And then we have, and this is just a plane. We just made a plane here. And then we have this camera and the camera is here. Now, the thing you want to be really careful of when doing this is you don't want to move the camera. So if you're going to use three and move the camera like this, well, guess what? Now everything is off reference and that's not good. Command shift Z for undo camera movement. And so we're going to put it there. We're going to make sure that we leave it there. And I'm going to actually go through a step further and say, I'm going to click on this camera and right click and go to the rigging tags and go to the protection tag and put a protection tag. That means I can't actually now hit three, two, one, because I can't move the camera. The camera, this camera doesn't move. We're like, well, then how do I see what the heck is going on, Chad? Well, here, there's a little button right here, this little white button right here. You can click this off. We haven't really talked about cameras in any of the tutorials. And now we can see off what we're looking at. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and now we can see. We can actually see the camera's frame and see what we're looking at here inside of the perspective here. So now we have this, like so, and we're seeing this in here. Great, and this looks like this, basically. So this looks like we're seeing the camera, we're seeing what the camera's seeing, and we're seeing how the camera looks. If we click back on this button here, that's now gray. If we click back on this, hey, we're looking in the camera here. So at the end of the day, we want to look at this. So let's take an idea here. Let's say, for example, we hop out of here and we say we're going to take a cone. We'll take a cone this time. We'll take a cone and we're going to put this cone right here on this 
surface right here. We're gonna put this right here in the middle of this solid right here. We might even go here into the camera. I'm gonna go back and forth into the camera. When I'm not in the camera, I can move back and forth and move around and change my position so I can see, I can zoom in and get close. Um, but when I'm on the camera, I can't because I have that protection tag on there. The protection tag is gonna stop me from doing anything dangerous. I can still rotate the solid though, or rotate the cone and move that around because that's not there. So now I have this sort of, sort of for better, for worse, I guess in the best I can do resting on here, I'm using E, R, and T to kind of just hit this and have this rotated exactly into place there. I feel, I feel pretty good about that. I feel like it's hitting there. Yeah, that feels pretty good. We're just gonna put this right on the surface. Maybe we'll add some more edges to the cone. We'll add some more rotation segments to the cone, maybe four, uh, 32. And so we'll have there. And then we go back into the camera. Now, when I go back in the camera, I'm gonna save this. It's gonna ask me if I wanna update. Yeah, I wanna update. Cool. So now I'm gonna show you the next part of this. I'm gonna go into After Effects here. And in After Effects, I don't have the reference from AE. I sent the reference from AE out of After Effects, but I didn't import it back into After Effects. So in this case, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna import it back into After Effects. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say, take in reference from AE. Now I don't have to create this inside of After Effects. I mean, I sort of did, but if you have any Cinema 4D file, if you make anything in Cinema 4D, you could bring it into here like so. And so now we have this reference from AE. Now when I bring this in with this, looking through the camera that's in Cinema 4D, that's simulating the camera that was in originally in After Effects, which is looking at this scene like this, guess what? This will line up perfectly. And so here, boom, this lines up perfectly. The oranges and the colors are a little bit off. I got to look at the color arrangements there like so, but this is pretty good. Um, and so it's there. So now I have the top of the table inside of here. Now I don't really need the top of the table anymore because I don't really need to look at the top of the table. We're going to do a viewport only here and just see there. It's not going to look so sharp, but we're going to go here into viewport and we're going to say, I don't need this top of the table because this was just the reference. So I don't need this one anymore at all. Cool. I'll save that. Command S save. And actually, if I go back to this one, I don't actually need this top of table either. I can just say, you know what? This top of table is unnecessary. We're just going to turn this off. Again, save it. Wait for it to update in After Effects. Then boom. And now look, this is sitting there perfectly on the table. Perfectly fine. And I'm actually going to do one better. I'm actually going to do this a little bit better. I'm going to go back to here. Back to Cinema 4D. I'm going to turn the top of the table back on. I'll show you one that I really like. If this is here... And this is in some weird place. Let's say this is in some weird place and it's rotated weird. I'll show you a tool I really, really like. It's in the tools. Obviously, it's a tool. And it's called the tools transfer. Now, tools transfer, I can grab this and say tools transfer. And I can point at something else like this uh, top of table. And I can point at this table. Now, it's going to do something that I don't want it to do, but it'll work sort of. I'm going to take this top of table and put it right there. It's going to put it there. Now, one of the things it did is it moved it here. Great. It rotated it so it was in the same position of the table, but I don't really want that. And it also scaled this up so it had the same scaling of the table, which is not what I want either. So I'm going to turn scaling off here, and that's going to unscale it. And then I can just sit rotate and then rotate it 90 degrees on the right axis. I'm going to pull it up this way, and I'm going to hold down the shift key so it goes in increments and go exactly 90 degrees because I rotated a solid 90 degrees. And now I can just move it up a little bit. And now I know it's flush on the table here. Perfectly flush in the center of the table. That's kind of exactly what I want. I want to just see where it intersects here. I can look really closely to exactly where it intersects, which is just right there, right there on the top of the table. Perfect. Again, then I don't need the table. I'm going to go back. And again, if I save this now and I go in here, guess what? It doesn't look right at all because I'm looking through the wrong perspective. I need to go back into Cinema 4D and look here and look back at the camera and then save this. And then boom, it's right there. It's perfect. It's perfectly on the table. It's amazingly on the table. And so now we have it there. So we can use stuff we've created inside of After Effects, 3D stuff we create in After Effects. If we have 3D stuff, 3D, 3D text, 3D images, 3D solids, whatever it may be, we can use that up to line up and put stuff in a particular place. Here's a step forward we can also go as well. I'll show you a trick. This is kind of a little bit advanced, but we'll show you a trick here. Um, this top of the table is orange by default. It's kind of reddish orange, but it's an orange nonetheless. I'm going to delete this material on here. So we're going to get rid of this material. One of the nice materials we have here is if you go to the materials here, you go to the material manager here, uh, you'll see that we have this top of table, which came in that was orange, a little bit off orange there. If you go to create, this is a little secret here, create materials, you will see there's a material in here called a shadow catcher material. Now, right now, we don't have any shadows here. We don't have any shadows. So if you hit command R, we don't have any shadows here. There's nothing on this table here that looks like there. And so if we use this, if we said command S and save this, we're going to see 
that we have this with the table here like so. Okay, so we have this solid plane that's gray right now because we got rid of the material here and it's just there like so. Okay, we don't have any shadows here. So let's take a look. Let's create something that's going to make some shadows. So we're going to go here and create a light. We'll create a light. And here, we'll create a light and we'll put a light. We just made a light right here. We haven't talked about lights in any of the tutorials, but I'm giving you a little advanced look. And we have a light right here. Now, we can't see the shadow that exists here. So there is no shadow that's occurring. We're seeing some light adjustments. We're seeing some how the light is applying, but we're not seeing any shadow there. We're going to move this kind of just into there and have this and have a little bit of shadow kind of drifting up this way. If we hit Command-R, guess what? We see... Some shadow. Actually, we don't see some shadow because I didn't add some shadow. That makes no sense. Silly boy. Uh, let's go to shadow down here and go to shadow and say add shadow and say let's just add a soft map shadow. Now this light creates a shadow. Now when I hit command R, guess what? I have a shadow. Fantastic. Let's go look back to the camera and we're going to go here and do command R and make a shadow. Great. We have a shadow and we can move this light accordingly and have the shadow drift into whatever direction we want to. Command R, shadow. We can even put this light, I guess, behind here. We can actually go behind here so that the shadow drifts forward, kind of like this, and say, boom, have the shadow facing this way, kind of like there, if we wanted to. Now here, inside the camera, we now have a shadow that kind of falls this way. We have this kind of look there. Well, we're going to go here to create materials and grab a shadow catcher material, and that's going to create a shadow catcher material. We're going to put this on the top of the table, and the top of the table is going to look black. And when you see it inside of After Effects or see it inside of Cinema 4D, it doesn't really look right. It looks like, hey, we don't see a shadow at all because this is all black and this is all not worth it. But now here, what we can do is we can say, hey, let's take this and say take this cone, for example, and we're going to go in, save this. And maybe just for fun's sake, we're just going to make a second light. We'll make another light. We're going to hit hold on command and make another light. So we have a Second light in here. So now this is, if this, if the shadow catcher wasn't on here, just to show you, it would look like this. It would have shadows on either side of this here, which is fine. But we're going to put the shadow catcher material. And the shadow catcher material is just for other programs, basically. It's just designed for other programs. We're going to go back into this camera, make sure we're on the right perspective, save this, hop back into After Effects, and you're going to see, boom, well, it's going to look black. And why does it look black? What's going on? What's the problem? Because we're not in current. We are in viewport. We want to be in current, and current, again, will take a little bit longer render, and now we have, look, we have a little bit of shadow there, a little bit of shadow on the table. Man, we have some shadow on the table. It's a really dark shadow. I don't think we need a shadow that's that dark. I don't think we need a shadow at all, but I'm just showing that we can make a shadow. So we're going to go here, back into here. We're going to double click in the shadow catcher material and say, let's make the shadow catcher strength maybe more like 40. There, now it's barely any shadow, so there's just a little bit of shadow. We'll save this again. Again, you have to save every time. Unfortunately, you have to save. It's not like dynamic link. And now we have a softer shadow here. So we have a little bit of a softer shadow, just a little bit of shadow. But the truth is, honestly, there shouldn't necessarily be a shadow. And why shouldn't there be a shadow? Because honestly, um, this, I'm not seeing a lot of shadow on the top of the surface of this table. You know what I am seeing? Reflection. I'm seeing reflection. If only, if only there was a way that I could add reflection instead of shadow. Guess what, folks? I can go here. And say in here, I could say, let's take the shadow catch material. I'm going to take this, this uh, cone and I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Maybe we'll do this. Maybe I'll take the cone. I'll bring it up a little bit. We'll widen it out a little bit like this. Cool. We're going to go here. We're going to do a little bit more here. We're going to go a little bit fancier. We're going to go here just to be playful. We're going to take a uh, cube. We're going to take a cube. I'm going to put the cube in the same place as there. I'm going to use this tools transfer again. And I'm going to point right here and put the cube there. We'll take the cube. I'm going to go in a little bit. We're going to say, uh, let's go to the uh, E key here. And we're going to say, well, actually, the, the, the T key. We're going to take this and make this a little bit smaller like this. We'll make this a little bit uh, wider like this. We'll hit the E key. We'll move this up. So it's just here, just interacting with the screen right there. Boom. It's right there. We're going to add some um, cube. Maybe make the cube a little bit thinner. We'll go on the, on the Y axis and make it a little bit thinner or sorry, on this on the Z-axis, and make it a little bit thinner. Maybe we'll go to like 35, something smaller, make it a little bit bigger. We'll make it like 250 by 250, a little bit wider, and we're just going to put this, make sure that this is just going into the ground there, and we're going to add a little bit of filleting on there, and we're going to make that. We'll add a little bit more filleting. We'll have a little bit more filleting, and we'll have some more roundy edges. We're going to take the cone, the cone up here, Take the cone, we're going to add the top radius a little bit, a little bit wider there. 
bottom radius a little bit wider there, like there, maybe like that. Um, we'll take the caps, we'll turn the caps off here. And then simultaneously, lastly, we're going to grab in a cylinder. And again, I'm going to use the transfer tool, tools, transfer. I'm going to map this right to there, Let's put this there. And we're going to just take this cylinder and we're going to take this and say uh, in here, uh, in the orientation, we're going to take this and change the orientation or maybe just change the rotation, the coordinates. Um, let's see the rotation on the pitch. Yeah, it would be zero. Oh, no, sorry. We're going to change this to, we're actually going to use this this way. We're going to rotate and we're going to set shift and just rotate this 90 degrees. So it's perfectly there. We're going to move this up to here and we're going to make a little lamp. We're going to make a little lamp. They're like, so we'll make this a bit thinner. We have a little lamp there. Cool, we have a little lamp. So now we're looking through here and we're seeing, hey, we have a lamp. You know, it's somewhat of a lamp. It's a, it's this, you know, as good as a lamp we're going to get here. Make this a little wider, make this a little wider. Maybe bring this down a little bit. We have a lamp there, like so. And now here we can take Command S, boom, and we can have a little lamp inside of here. Now we have a little lamp on the table. Great, we have a lamp on the table, and the lamp obviously has some shadows and some things going on here. Well, we don't necessarily want the shadows. The shadows are great. I mean, they look really cool. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to put some materials on here. So inside of here, we're going to add some materials. We're going to go to um, materials. Maybe we'll go into materials. We'll add some wood materials here, some parquet maybe. Maybe this parquet here. And we'll add this on the bottom here. So we're going to add some parquet. On the uh, – I'll wait for that to upgrade. Um, on the um, the lampshade, we're going to add some some kind of fabric or something. We'll add some – maybe some some linen or something, just something simple, linen. There's a linen in here that we can grab. Grab some linen in there. And we're going to throw that material on there. So we're going to add some linen. Great. That looks great. And then we're going to grab some for the for the, uh, for the the post there. We're going to grab some alabaster. Good old alabaster. Take some time. Now we're going to add some alabaster there. So we have this cone that looks like this. Or we have this um, lamp that looks like this. Now the lamp is a little bit dark. Um, and that's because some of the material, not the linen, but the alabaster and the uh, the parquet is very reflective. Right now it's reflecting this black window screen. And so it's not really giving us a full great reflection. Um, later on, we can talk about adding different kinds of lights or different kinds of reflective materials in here. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add a sky in here. We're going to go here and add in, just for fun, we're going to go to the lights and pull down and go to physical sky and add a physical sky in here, and that'll add a physical sky around us. Now, this physical sky exists around us. If we look outside of here, it's this great big globe around the entire world that just kind of adds some reflectivity to this. And so now we have this inside of here. But we're going to go back to the camera, and now you see when we render... The physical sky is going to be there. And so we're going to see that. And it's going to look better. It's going to look a little bit nicer. We can actually rotate the sky. We can hit in the sky and say rotate and change the axis of where the sky is and change how the sky looks and wherever it may be. Kind of mimic whatever we want to. Now it looks like there. Again, this is taking even longer to render because there's more going on. We're going to save this. Go back into After Effects. Here we go. Back in After Effects. Wait for it. It's going to take a second. It's going to take a second to process. It's going to do some work here. It's going to rebuild this. Here it is, rebuilding this. And again, we have a lot of stuff going on here, so it's taking some time to actually render this through. And there it is in there. Now, one of the problems that I notice sometimes is when we have surfaces like this and you're looking in current, you'll sometimes see this edging on here. And this is a problem. You'll see some edging on here that creates some edging there. Um, and it looks good, but there's some a little bit of edging going on here. And there's even on the edges here, there's a little bit of edging here. And that is from the physical sky. And the physical sky causes some edging in some random places. Um, there's some things you can do about that. I find that the easiest thing to do about that is that typically the physical sky doesn't show up. So when you add a physical sky inside of Cinema 4D, it After Effects just says, hey, don't even consider the sky part of it. It's just there for reflection. Don't even consider it part of the image. And so here, you notice the sky is not showing up. It's still just transparent here, except, man, the edge is not necessarily your best friend. The easiest way, you could put a matte choker on here or some kind of other effect inside of After Effects to kind of correct this. The easiest thing that I found is, is if you go to the physical sky and you say physical sky, if you right click and go to this tag called a compositing tag, it is in the render tags, render compositing tag. You're going to say rendering compositing tag and you're going to turn off scene by camera. And this control right here. So we added this physical sky 
rendering tag, compositing tag. I love the compositing tag, especially when I'm doing compositing, like compositing inside of other software, I can use this compositing tag. And this compositing tag, we're going to turn off scene by camera. And that's going to mean it's not going to be there anymore. It still does its stuff. It still does what it's doing. It still exists and it still exists in reflection. Notice that in the compositing tag, scene by reflection and scene by refraction still exists, which means it still illuminates this world and it still lights it up. It just doesn't exist anymore. It's not seen anymore. You can almost see the blue, a little bit of blue on there, but it doesn't exist as an idea here anymore. We're going to save this, hop back in After Effects. Again, this is going to take another little time to render. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait patiently, depending on the speed of your system, depending on the quality of your system, that communications. And now look, we don't have that edging anymore. It's a lot nicer. It's a lot there. We're still getting some shadow and I don't necessarily want the shadow because the shadow is actually drifting onto the edge of this, which is sort of showing where the, where the, the plane ends because there's so much shadow on this that the shadow is drifting heavily onto here. If you look back at Cinema 4D and you said you didn't do it, you did it without the shadow, um, you could see that when I hit Command R, you see that there's a lot of shadow that's going to exist on side of here. All this dark spot here is just shadow. And that's showing up. That shadow area right there is showing up inside of after effects which is not necessarily what we want but we didn't want shadow in the first place so let's ignore the idea that we have shadow let's go back to the top of the table we're going to throw this on there but in this case i'm going to try this instead of shadow what we're going to do is we're going to say instead of shadow we are going to say turn off shadow and we're going to add in reflection just some mediocre maybe 25 percent reflection we're going to hit 25 percent, and we're going to add reflection instead and as a further detail, just for this other light, this secondary light, I want to turn off the create shadows as well, because we're creating a shadow going backwards, which is not what I want. I want the shadow going forward, and we're going to say none. We're going to create some reflection. So we're going to save this, and we're going to look how this looks here. Instead of here, we're gonna, I usually move to a different place, because this is sort of already rendered, so we're going to move to a different place. And I'm just going to make sure that it renders. I'm going to look for the blue thing to complete. It'll take a second here, but we'll just let it go in there. And now, look, I have some reflection the reflection coming off on the table there. Look at that. I have some actual table reflection that's imitating some table reflection that's happening there. So again, I might want to take that down a little bit, make me make it a little bit less. I can go back into Cinema 4D and say, double click this here and say maybe just a 15 reflection or 10, 12 reflection, 12% 12 reflection. I'm going to save. And now instead of shadow, I have reflection because I think this deserves reflection more. Now, some of the reflection dissipates off of here and with a little bit of, of fading here. There's some things we can do here to make the reflection work. We're going to get less reflection. So there's a soft reflection and we can do some stuff inside of, you know, we can just do a mask. There's stuff you can do to this layer. So with this layer, you can still do stuff to this layer. Even though this is a Cinema 4D file, you can still do to it. Uh, so you can say like, like you could go in here to a mask and you could say, put a mask around this and say in here, sorry, mask, let's go mask. And add a mask around this and say, yeah, let's put a mask here, something like this, and have this mask, you know, have a mask around this, and then feather this mask and kind of blur off some of these edges here and have this be blurred out. Taking a little bit of time to render um, here. So we can do some stuff to make some corrections to it in terms of the image here. Man. My system's really slowing up now. I'm doing a lot of stuff now. I'm doing a lot of stuff inside of After Effects, inside of Cinema 4D, um, but I can do some ideas inside of there. Just waiting for this to re-render. Again, every time you do stuff, it's going to have to re-render. Here's the, here's the truth. At the end of the day, in the circumstances, at the end of the circumstances that we have here, um, um as you do stuff to this, and as you do stuff to this, it's going to take longer to render. And at the ultimate, at the ultimate end of the day here, you may not take After Effects or you may not take Cinema 4D as your final result. Um, the Cineware plugin is great for setting up your reference and creating connections between things. So we can go in here and we can say, let's take this. And sometimes I'll even pre-compose this. Command Shift C, pre-compose this. Move all attributes. Once I have this here, pre-compose this. And then uh, sometimes it's easier to render um, different things. So if I do color correction, say I do something like curves and I do some kind of color correction, I can curve this to add some, you know, change the color correction to this and make this darker, whatever I need to be, or bright at the top end, add a contrast curve. And I can control this a little bit nicer 
inside of a pre-comp. So I can do that as well. That is the thing I can do. What I was saying before was, is that a lot of times you do this for setup. You do this to set this up and to make sure this looks right and this looks good and everything looks proper and everything's in the right place and the lamp looks good and it's all appropriate, great. And you do this kind of here. And then when you're done, you say, hey, now I want to go into Cinema 4D and I want to export out of Cinema 4D. So I want to take this out of Cinema 4D and I want to export this out of Cinema 4D. There's a little bit better feathering there. And I want to do that that way. Um, that's a thing you can do. So that's kind of part of the equation of things you can do. So now we have a little softened edge off of there. Um, maybe not so much feathering. A little bit of feathering there. And just have a little bit of softened edge or whatever you want to do. You can kind of determine how this looks, et cetera, and what's going to get out of this. And there's some other things we can do here to make this better. But this is kind of just the, the basic. This is the basics of what we're going to do here. But a lot of times when you're done, you say, hey, this is great. This looks okay. Forget Cineware. Delete it. Get rid of it. Boom. Gone not using it. And now I want to export out of Cinema 4D because this is going to give you much better results in terms of your render. This is going to, at the end of the day, this is going to give you much better results in terms of how this works. Now, I want to talk about a couple more things inside of here that people don't really know about. So I think, I don't know, we're going to, I'm going to undo and we're going to bring this back in here. When you do this, when you create a new Cinema 4D file, so we're just going to say, we're going to start fresh here, Command N, and you create a new Cinema 4D file. Um, it makes that Cinema 4D file a certain length of time. So we're going to new max and Cinema 4D file, and we're going to call this um, uh, Giant Robot. Giant Robot. And we go in here in Giant Robot. And when it makes this, it makes the Cinema 4D file here a certain set of, uh, of criteria. And this Giant Robot here is 30 frames per second, it's 90 frames long, and furthermore, if you go into the render settings, inside of the render settings here, you'll see that it made this 1280 by 720. And this is weird to me. This is really bothers me that it makes it 1280 by 720, and it makes it 1280 by 720 despite the fact that my After Effects is 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames a second. The, the project I made or the comp I made is 1920 by 1080, and it's... This is 1280 by 720, and it's not its not the same. It's going at 30 frames a second versus 24 frames a second, and it's only three seconds long. So what you may want to do is you may want to go in here, and you may want to say, inside of here, before we even get started, we might have switched this, switch this to maybe something like film video, uh, HDTV 1080, 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames a second. We might want to say this and change this to... 24 frames a second because we're working in 24 frames a second. We might want to change this from 72 frames. Zero to 72 frames is three seconds long. We may want to change this to zero to 239 frames, which would be theoretically 240 frames, which would be 10 seconds long. Save this. And now inside of After Effects, yeah, this is now 10 seconds long. It's 24 frames a second. It is Cinema 4D naturally by default automatically switches to 30 frames a second. It switches to 1280 by 720 is its default. And it switches to uh, three seconds long as its default. Well, we don't want that. And we don't want that to do. So you may have to go in there and manually control that to make sure that that's correct and proper. One other thing, you'll notice that if you make something inside of After Effects and you animate it by default, the animation, and this will be future stuff, but the animation inside of After Effects, if you move something here and you say make this 300 by 500, right? And you move it over two seconds and you move it over here to 1300 and you animate something in After Effects, it moves linearly. Now, you know in After Effects that you move something and it moves linearly across the screen and it moves like there across the screen at a standard rate. You know that you can click on this and you can hit F9 or you can go to the animation menu and go to animation and go to keyframe assistant and go to easy ease. And you can add ease to this and then it will speed up and slow down. So it'll speed up and slow down. And this is the animation that exists in After Effects. That is by default, it's linear. You can add some ease to change the temporal interpolation. Well, here's the thing. Inside of Cinema 4D, if you're in Cinema 4D, by default, the animation is spline-based animation, which means if I make a cube, let's say, for example, I make a cube, and we haven't really gotten animation yet in the cubes, but if we make a cube and we were to say animate this cube to move across the screen 
from here. And we were to say, take the cube here and add something like position coordinates here. And we were to go to two seconds later, move it over to here and change this value. Boom. This is going to automatically add spline animation. It's going to speed up and slow down. This is by default inside of Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D defaults to speeding up and slowing down inside of Cinema 4D. So in the settings, in the system settings, the spline animation should be defaulted to linear. So we'll delete this cube here. We don't need this cube anymore. We're going to go to Command D to go to the settings um, and the, 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 the basic project settings. And we're going to switch to linear and make sure this is linear. So I want this to be linear. I probably want this to be 24 frames a second because I typically work with 24 frames a second. I want this to be 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to check all of my settings. Any settings that I like in Cinema 4D, the way that I like Cinema 4D to work, and I like it to be 10 seconds long, anything, any of the settings that I like, how I like Cinema 4D to look, I'm going to go here and I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to save this. This is going to save a giant robot. And I'll show you a trick, a thing you can do, a thing that works inside of here. Inside of here, we have inside of here, we have this giant robot. I'm going to make a copy of this giant robot. I'm actually going to take this. I'm going to say duplicate this and make a second giant robot, except I'm going to call this giant robot, this copy default. I had to find this default. So I'm going to make this file here called default. It's going to look like this. It's going to be this default file. Now inside of here, I'm going to go into my hard drive. So I'm going to go into my hard drive and I'm going to go to my applications folder. In my applications folder, you will find a file here inside of Adobe After Effects. Adobe After Effects version 2023 in plugins, in Cineware by Maxon. Inside here, you will see in support, you will see a file called default.c4d. This file is called default.c4d. Well, I'm going to take this default and I'm going to replace this with this default, which is the new one. And the new one is 24 frames a second. It's 1920 by 1080. It's using uh, linear animation. Um, we're going to say replace and we're going to replace this here. It's going to ask me to make sure of this. I'm going to say yes. Replace this with this one. It's going to replace this. Now, henceforth, in here, in After Effects, Anytime I make a new Cinema 4D file in After Effects. Now, if I bring a Cinema 4D file outside of After Effects and I bring um, from something I, I made, you know, generically in Cinema 4D, that'll just come in with whatever settings it comes in as. But when I make something inside of here, so if I'm doing this ever, if I'm doing new Max and Cinema 4D file, I'll call this, I don't know, cool new robot. This robot will default to all the default settings. That settings, that C4D file is buried in the plugin support of the After Effects. And so now when I make this, it makes this, guess what? It's 24 frames a second. It's 239. It is using linear animation. It is using 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames a second. Everything, all the settings there, everything I'm working with is exactly the way. So every time it makes a new one, it makes it with those exact settings. So that's a thing you can do. You may know, we may have talked about it before, that if you're inside of Cinema 4D and you want Cinema 4D, that every time Cinema 4D makes a new file, so now if I'm in Cinema 4D and I go to File, New Project, Command N, well, my new Command N new project here is set to 24 frames a second to 239 at linear there. And that is because when I make that, so anytime I open up Cinema 4D, so if I just say, Let's close that. Let's close that. And let's quit Cinema 4D. Anytime I open up Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D opens up. It makes a new file. That is because inside of applications in Maxon, there will be a file called new. And I've made a file called new. I created a file. I created something called new. So in Cinema 4D, anytime I make something new in Cinema 4D, it references this, this new file. And whatever this new file settings are, that's what it uses to make the Cinema 4D file. Inside of After Effects, it's in a separate place in a folder called default. I had to find that and figure out where that made that, but that is the default file that's in Cinema 4D, or that's in After Effects. So now this loads up, it loads up in here and creates this new thing. And this, if this new is still at whatever, whatever you're used to, I mean, you can obviously change the settings after the fact, but whatever you're used to in terms of settings, that's probably what you want to use. So now here, it's going to load this up. It's going to prompt up. But again, this is 24 frames a second, 239. It's using linear animation. It's set to 
1920 by 1080, all these things are set up there like so. So if that's just easier for you than having to go to change it every single time, change the file or create a file inside the Cinema 4D folder called new and create a file inside the plugins folder in After Effects called default. So that either way, you're working with what you're used to working with in there. I want to show a couple more things or a couple more ideas just to round this out Um, because I didn't mention this before, but I do want to mention this. Inside of here, if I make something, if I make, let's just say, we'll get rid of cool new robot here. And I go here and I say, let's just grab in reference from AE, which was the lamp. We're going to grab in the reference from AE. We'll actually go back to this comp here. Um, and so we have this reference from AE. This is taking a little second to render, but we'll let this go. Um, here, one of the things that happens here, and I'm actually going to go into, I'm actually going to get rid of this here. We'll delete this and we'll just go to reference from AE, the original one. We'll bring the reference from AE. This reference inside of here. So this reference inside of here, um, this is looking at the screen of this. So this is looking at viewport draft. It's looking at, we can look at viewport or current or whatever we want to look at. We can look at this here. Um, we're looking at the screen playing back what's happening in Cinema 4D. A problem occurs if you try to grab this file here and using the selection tool, you try to grab this and move this. It's going to give you an error. And I want to just talk about this error, what this error means, what this error looks like. So inside here, um, max and Cinema 4D, layer size, much match composition, and use default transform durations. The idea being is, is if I want to move this lamp, I need to move this in Cinema 4D. If I move this inside of After Effects, it's not moving the lamp. It's moving the screen that's playing back the lamp. If you're watching an episode of a TV show and you don't like where the character is sitting, you don't move your TV in your living room to move the character, right? That doesn't work that way. You have to call up the network and be like, hey, tell Chandler to move over to here. That's a different conversation. That's a different thing. So you're telling, this is just broadcasting what this is. So moving this doesn't necessarily work. Um, so rescaling it, any of the transform functions don't necessarily work the way you want them to, and they don't do what they're supposed to do there. I just want to show that to you as an idea. There is a workaround. I'll tell you a quick little workaround to that. This is a trick. This is a dirty trick here. If you go to effects and you go to effects uh, distort transform, you can add a transform effect. In which case, with the transform effect, now that's adding an effect, which is basically distorting the image that you're looking at, so it's distorting the screen. And the distortion of the screen, you could theoretically move position and move this to different places, and you could rotate it if you wanted to, but it's only a 2D rotation, so. But you could sort of fix it after the fact. If it was not perfect, you could add a transform as an effect, which is a different mentality. And so just because like, like color correction effect, you can add effects into here. We're going to go back to reference from AE. So now here, I want to change this. I want to change this to something else. And I want to talk about this. I can go to edit and I can go to edit original and edit original. By the way, just in case we're wondering, if you ever want to go to a different version of Cinema 4D, you'll see inside of Cineware, right now under options, here under options, in the Cineware options, it says under options, it is using Maxon Cinema 4D 2023 Cinema 4D app. This is the app it's using. You could actually choose a different app. It's You just have to shut it down and shut it back on again. It usually wants you to clean up the memory before you do that. It says purge memory. That's fine. But we're going to go here into reference from AE, and we're going to go to edit, edit original, command E. And this is going to open up Cinema 4D and open up this lamp and build this lamp inside of here. And now we have this reference from AE open again. I'm going to clean out a whole bunch of stuff because I just want to talk about one last thing. Just one, maybe one last thing, maybe two. We'll see. One last thing inside of here. Um, I'm having fun. So we're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of the, 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 the cylinder. I just want to go back to the cube. Get rid of the cone. We're just going to go back to here. We'll even get rid of the top of the table um, here. We just have this cube here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. We'll get, rid of the, we'll get rid of the lights as well. Cool. We're just going to do this, this cube here. And I'm going to take this cube and I'm going to say the T key. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. And I'm going to get rid of this material. So we have no material in here. I'm just going to hit Command S and save this. You're going to see it's going to update. And here it's going to update. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. We're just going to go into... Let's see if it'll update. Report draft. There we go. So we just have a top table. We can go back to current and see there. Sometimes I switch the renderer in here just to refresh it. So now I have this top of the table here. I want to show you this. Sometimes materials inside of Cinema 4D don't work the way you want them to inside of After Effects. This is a problem that occurs sometimes. And I don't always know what the materials are, but we can play a little bit with materials. We can look at some of the wood materials. 
Most of the wood materials should be fine. Uh, we can try something like spruce planks and put spruce planks in here. We'll see. I'm not sure. I can't promise, but I know this happens on occasion. We're going to take spruce planks here. We're going to hit save, command S. We're going to hop back into After Effects and see if spruce planks comes in here and wait for it. It does. Okay, so it does here. We're looking in current modes. So we're seeing this in current. It's there like so. Um, we talked about before that some materials will have a lot of reflectivity and because they have reflectivity, they will also have some problems. So we could look at something like maybe um, maybe uh, walnut or something or walnut. Yeah, maybe this walnut. We could apply this walnut on here and say, let's throw this walnut on here. Let's let this download. We'll throw this walnut in here and see if this walnut comes through. It may come through fine. We'll see, take a look. So we'll save this inside of here and see what this does in After Effects there. Okay, it's coming out very dark, very black, which means, yeah, we might want to put something like a sky on this or something that's reflected. This is a highly reflected material. We may want to go in here and put a physical sky or some kind of other thing and save and go in here and say, yeah, let's take a look at how this looks as this re-renders. Here it is rendering. Yeah, we could put we could put some controls there, but it actually is doing some things. You're going to find some materials that are difficult, that are just challenging for to do. And so what I'm going to suggest doing is, is with the challenging materials, you may want to consider this. We're going to go here to Material Manager. We're going to clear out some of these materials. We're playing with some other materials here, but we're just going to start simple. We're going to get rid of all these other materials here. Um, just grab these guys and delete them. Cool. And we're just going to start with something else here. Uh, I'm going to grab in some kind of... Uh, complicated material here. We're just going to delete this and say, let's look at the, I don't know, stonework, maybe stonework, maybe cobblestone or something. We can try pavement here. Occasionally there's some complicated um, materials. Anyway, so we have this um, pavement here. It looks like this. Again, it looks kind of cool here. Will it show up inside of After Effects? It probably will. Who knows? Yeah, it actually is doing a pretty good job showing up in After Effects. Um, one of the things you may want to do, just as a safety net, um, is if you save this, you can save this. Save project with assets. A lot of times going from one program to another, um, all the materials aren't the same between different versions of Cinema 4D, and you may have some issues there. They're getting better at it, but sometimes um, save project with assets says, hey, Save this project with the assets that are included. We are going to say OK, and it's going to ask you for a place to save it. I'm going to create a folder, just a folder called C4D with assets. Cool. Actually, I have a C4D with assets folder. Um, excellent. And I'm going to create a new um, something else. Um, we'll make a new folder called C4D plus stuff. C4D plus stuff plus stuff. And we're going to call this uh, ref, ref from AE. And we're going to bring this in. What this is going to do is going to create this file with the stuff used to make it. I'll show this to you on the desktop here really quick. Um, here, pop it here. Um, we'll see instead of here, C4D plus stuff. Um, this is the ref from AE file plus the material, the textures used to make this file. If you want to keep this and keep this kind of safe, you may want to save it with the materials there because when you hop into a different system, sometimes the assets aren't loaded. This will make sure that the asset files that this thing is referencing is always there. It's just a good habit to get into. It's a good, safe thing to do. Anyway, that's, I think, all we're going to cover. There's a lot more we can do with Cineware. There's a lot of cool things you can do by interacting between Cineware and having Cineware kind of um, communicate back and forth in between here with how Cineware works. I think there's some some more fun we can do things about live linking and uh, exporting scene, extracting scene data from Cineware, from Cinema 4D, so you can bring it in here. There's some other things we can do with cameras, so we can have actually have cameras that move. So if we have a scene that we want to track, we can track it in After Effects and then use the Max and Cinema 40 exported, export that tracked idea. That's some other things we can play with. But I think this is some basic fundamentals of how to incorporate your Cinema 4D stuff into your Affect stuff. I still recommend, I still absolutely recommend that when you're done, even if this is perfect and it looks great and fantastic here, you may want to go back into Cinema 4D and export it out of Cinema 4D. You may want to go into Cinema 4D and set up your export settings and say everything here is how this is going to render and render, you know, using the uh, the picture viewer or whatever it may be, um, the render view to go out of here and render out of that. So you may want to use Cinema 4D because Cinema 4D actually has better renderers and better control over its thing. You just use Cineware as a reference for setting it up and making sure that it works sort of right. And then ultimately at the end of the day, 
go into Cinema 4D to do your final output. Anyway, that's all we're going to do for today. We're going to get some more fun with After Effects and Cinema 4D and maybe Premiere and other stuff. Um, it's going to be some good time. So play, have fun, and I'll see you in a future lesson.